Creepy Legends, Paranormal Research, Archives for the Crump Theater in Columbus, Indiana. The Crump Theater dates back to 1889. Though there are no records or documents of anyone dying in the Crump, it is claimed to be haunted. On June 24, 2011, the Creepy Legends Paranormal Research team investigated these claims. Upon arrival to the theater, we were greeted by Ravine Quigley, the theater manager. She showed us around and brought us up to date on the haunted claims. She informed us of a ghost named Charlie that's often seen in the basement. Also in the basement is a woman who is characterized as being snooty. Ravina had also informed us about a spirit of a colored man who is seen wearing a brown suit and often wears a hat. Ravine had also told us about an apparition of a man who likes to leap off the balcony and dissipates as he does so. With these reports, we began our investigation. EVPs, Electronic Voice Phenomenon. This first EVP was recorded in what's known as the Crybaby Room. The Crybaby Room was location in the theater where mothers would take their unruly infants to quiet them down during a movie or during a show. In this EVP, you will hear my wife, Vonda, ask how many ghosts are in the Grump Theater, in which she gets a direct reply. How many ghosts are in here with us? If you listen carefully at the end of her question, you will hear what appears to be a little girl's voice replying, eight. Listen closely. How many ghosts are in here with us? In this next recording, you will hear two of our investigators, Jane and Susan, discussing hearing music. Neither investigator was aware during this time that hearing music is one of the claims in the Crump Theater. This next recording was caught by three of our investigators, Susan, Jane, and Jared. If you listen carefully in the beginning of this recording, you will hear faint piano notes being played. a piano on the stage of the theater however at this exact moment there was no one on the stage or near the piano listen again for three notes being played on the high pitched side of a piano three investigators, Jane, Susan, and Jared, ask for a tap response. If you listen carefully, you will hear a faint tap in the background. If you don't want us to go, tap for us. Did you 
please do that to, again? This next EVP was recorded in the basement. Though we were addressing a spirit named Charlie, we caught a little girl humming in the background. Listen carefully as Vonda says, I know you're here with me. I see you. You're taking it to the red. I know you're here with me. I see you. You're taking it to the red. I know you're here with me. In the basement, we recorded an EVP of a woman. She starts off her statement by saying, I wish you would. At one point of our investigation in the basement, David set down his flashlight and requested for the spirit to turn the flashlight on. The flashlight did come on by itself. Shortly after the flashlight had come on, the K2 meter did a quick flash. This is the actual clipping. That's crazy. That is crazy. No, it, it's recording still. Yeah. And now the K2 is going off. Shortly after the flashlight comes on, Vonda requests for the flashlight to be turned off. When she does, we record an EVP of a woman whispering, easy to. We're not sure what she says after that. Could possibly be burn. Here is the actual EVP. Can you shut the light off for us? Can you shut the light off for us? This next EVP is very interesting. Still while in the basement, we catch an EVP of a woman whispering. In the very beginning, it sounds like she says, there is a secret. Then we can't make out whether she's saying theater. She goes on with her sentence, but it's hard to make out. But she's definitely saying, there is a secret. Is this like the last act? Is that before the show's over? This next EVP is a pretty impressive one. Right after David mentions getting a cheeseburger, you'll hear a woman whisper, yes. Sally is the talker of the group. She's the communicator. She makes spirits feel comfortable with her. That's a good thing. As Sally's talking about things in her childhood and throughout the years, you'll hear this lady whisper right along with Sally as if she's holding a conversation with her. Even at one point, the lady will even say something about a house sister or how is my sister right after Sally mentions pies. Listen carefully. I'll get you a cheeseburger, some french fries, and a Coke. You know, I used to eat at the God's Cafe with my parents every, oh, about every other Sunday. And good fried chicken, mashed potatoes, corn, green beans, coleslaw. Never had to eat a salad. Okay, Sally, we're hungry. We all know that. Let's go back to this thing. And then a lips nut, they were known for their pies. Yeah, that's what they were known for. They were known for their pies. Oh, and all the stores were down here. There was Hilger's, Atros. The last two EVPs I'm going to play are actually tied in with each other. You will first hear an EVP that me and Vonda recorded as we entered the balcony. Listen closely 
in the beginning for a man to say, I dust this floor in an Irish accent. As you can tell in the EVP, neither me or Vonda was able to hear the individual with our own ears. You hear Vonda ask something about the meter and I reply yes. What's interesting is the very next day, Sally came to me and said you have to hear an EVP that I caught on my recorder. She said it sounds like a man with an accent. I listened to the EVP. What I heard was David mention something about backing off, and then, as plain as day, I heard an Irishman say, Aye, it's off. I'll go back to the box. I was shocked when I heard this. As crystal clear as it is, this individual had to be right up against the mic. The voice that you're about to hear is not David, nor Sally, or anybody in our group. Move it so it's back off. Oh, I'll go in the box. After hearing this extraordinary EVP, I decided to call Ravine and I asked Ravine if there had ever been an employee of the Grump Theater that might have been from Ireland or might have had an Irish accent. Ravine confirmed that there was. In 1962, the Grump Theater's manager was Kevin Pendergast. Kevin was Irish and he was uh, from Ireland, had the Irish accent. Uh, Ravine had also explained that Kevin was very proud of his position and uh, very honored to be the manager of the Grump Theater. In the late 60s, uh, the family that owned the Crump sold it to another family, and uh, therefore Kevin lost his position as the manager, and he moved back to Ireland. Sally did some more research and found out that Kevin Pendergast passed away in Dublin, Ireland on October 31st, 2007. Uh, Sally also found out that there was a Charlie that also worked at the Crump Theatre, Charlie had worked there for a very long time, working his way up from ticket taker to usher to running the projectors. Um, though we didn't catch a Charlie on any EVPs that we know of, nor did we see any Charlie, it's very possible that uh, you know there might be a, an apparition there that goes by the name of Charlie. Uh, in short, I would like to say that the Crump Theater was very impressive. and. Uh, Thank you for listening to our archives of creepy legends. Oh,